Hello, everybody. It is Mike Young with a plantbaseddiet.org, and I am excited to be here with Dr. Scott Harrington from Vegan Primary Care. All Hello. right. And how do you like to be addressed, Dr. Scott, Dr. Harrington? I know Mark's your middle name, right? So what do yeah. you Yeah. Dr. Harrington or Scott or ho however you like, yeah, however you like. Dr. Harrington's good, you know. That's okay, good. Dr. Harrington. All right, we'll do that. Um, well, anyway, I met you about a month, month and a half ago, I think it was, in Tarpon Springs, Florida, which is just northwest of Tampa. If you guys don't know where that is, everybody seems to know where Tampa is. And you are doing some groundbreaking work, as far as I'm concerned. Because I'm all about the plants, as you see behind me, and, I uh, and I'd love the medical establishment, right, to get involved and really get behind that with like a plant forward type of medical practice. And I think that's what that's what you're offering, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, I tell people, you know, hey, I'm Dr. Scott Harrington. I wanted to move online. So online practice with COVID coming out and, you know, people yeah. accepting telemedicine. I've been a telemedicine doctor for a while now. And I thought, you know, I could make drscottharrington.com, but I want to make vegan primary care because that's who I want. That's my patient base that I want to attract because I'm a plant-based doctor. I've been doing it for a long time. And the patients ever since I've been putting this out have been so happy because they sometimes people deal with some significant amount of kind of discrimination from yeah. the omnivore world about, you know, oh, you know, you need to, it's, you need to eat more protein or, you know, kind of uh, uh, spouting false information about, you know, nutrition. And Correct. so. Chris, so you got that. So you got that. That's your, your key part, I think, is you got the truth with you in terms of nutrition. When a lot of times I feel like, unfortunately, that's not conveyed in a traditional medical practice. So not only are you going to vegan and plant-based, but you're going online. I mean, are you fully online? How to, how, let's, I mean, let's kind of dive in. Like if, if there's a viewer out there that says, oh, this is great. I want to be one of your patients. Like what's involved? Can it be anywhere? How does, how does it work? Right, right. One of the beauties of uh, the fact that I've been working telemedicine for a little while is I have lots of state licenses. So I have 32 state licenses and 10 temporary state licenses with the COVID thing. So most places in the United States, you can see me as your doctor and I can perform primary care type duties where, you know, we order labs and order uh, referrals and, and things like this. Um, the, uh, so I, I, I can be that person for you. So this is really, it's really great. And, and it's, and it's a lot of people are excited about it. So yes. Yes. Well, you said, I, if they, join or become a member or see you as a patient, are they going to see you or do you have others in your practice? How does that work? Right now, my practice is small because, you know, we just started six, six months ago. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and so that's kind of nice because you get into the ground floor and my, my appointments are an hour long. You can oh, go wow. sh shorter if you want, but I think it takes, see, one of the things is I wanted to have my own practice because I didn't want to be running like, you know, a hamster in a wheel and yeah. trying to, you know, uh, you know, uh, just refill people's medications and get them out the door. That that's not my, with lifestyle medicine practice, that's, with the health practice, <laughs> you, as a family doctor, you try to get to know people, try to find the ways they can tweak their health, uh, little behaviors that can make a big difference in their life. So that that's what I'm all about. All right. And now the move to telemedicine as well is, is new, I think, and different for most people. How do you allay someone's fears. I mean, I, I'm just thinking, actually, I've never gone, I've never been in a telemedicine appointment, but I can see the value. I can see the, 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 the benefits, like the, the superiority actually over, over uh, going into an office, mainly because a lot of times you're dealing with transmittable viruses that, and that doesn't come into play, obviously on the computer <laughs> from a human standpoint. So, but I, I, you're telling me already, you're going to spend more time with the patient, which is awesome to hear. I love to hear that. But what about just the whole environment or the, the doctor patient, the bedside manner or whatever? How, I mean, obviously, you're, you're a very well-spoken individual, friendly, nice. I know because I met you in person as well. And I'm, I'm talking <laughs> to you now. You. <laughs> so, so you got that going for you. So I'm just trying to make sure that we touch on all these points so that we can get as many people with a real open mind who want to take this next step into telemedicine and with your practice. 
Yeah. So your question about, you know, what about telemedicine? Are you sure that you can have a good experience with telemedicine? And uh, that that's kind of the what people feel initially uh, in terms of that uh, common sense wise, this can't be as good as an in-person visit. But it, it turns out like it, it, I feel in many ways it's better. Uh, just like, uh, you know, uh, adopting technology can be kind of challenging. We don't we don't adopt the time till we're forced. Right. But um like, I don't take a taxi anymore. I take an Uber or a Lyft. And, you know, the first day that I took Uber, I'm like, oh my God, this is you know, so much better than calling for a taxi. You can't, you don't know where they, when they're yeah, going to show up and do things on your phone and, and it's there. Yeah, it's there. There's no <laughs> money changing hands and, and this and that. And, and so um, I became an instant believer. And that's kind of why I always encourage people to go do a telemedicine visit, whether it's with me or whether it's provider, it's the wave of the future. Um, you know, somebody else, a lot of doctors are doing telemedicine now with the, with the, with the coronavirus. Um, and so you can kind of pick and choose. You can pick and choose a doctor who, uh, you know, is just like you and has the same beliefs and, and it's getting a little bit more democratic in a way. Uh, so, um, but, but, uh, what you're talking about is the limitations of telemedicine. What are, what are the limitations? Okay. Yes. And so uh, there are exam, the biggest limitations are exam limitations. Um, without additional devices, without additional devices, you are limited. You can't do a heart exam or a lung exam right. uh, and you can't look in someone's ears. Uh, you know, for instance, you can kind of get an exam in the mouth, you know, say, ah, type of thing. And you can show somebody, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's actually a pretty good exam. That's a pretty good exam right there. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can see a rash, you can, um, you know, and, and you can offer advice. Most of the things that a primary care doctor does is advising, hearing mm -hmm. about, you know, trying to diagnose a common problem. Mm -hmm. ordering tests and this. Thing. And one of the common complaints people say is uh, my doctor never looked at me. I was just, you know, he was on the, they were on the computer clicking away and, you know, uh, but at least one of the benefits of telemedicine yeah, is I her. can, I yeah. can click and talk <laughs> and look at you at the same time, you know? So uh, yes. that's one thing. So I said, you know, additional devices. So I partner with something called Taito Care. Taito yeah. Care. And so this is kind of the right. last mile. This is like the last mile of the limitations of thing. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm feeling what you're saying already. I, I want to hear what you have to say about this. This sounds very interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, this is going to take the world by storm, uh, this type of technology. It sounds simple. It's uh, this Taito Care device, T-Y-T-O, Taito Care, uh, Taito Home device, is this uh, kind of a, a box-shaped device that you can attach different thing? You know, like when you go to the doctor, they have the otoscopes uh, hanging on the wall, and mm -hmm. they, you know, there's a stethoscope. Well, this has a little recording device, and you put it on the chest, and it tells you, "Oh, put it right here, put it right there," and it'll listen, and it will record a little uh, an exam for the heart, and you put it on the lung fields in the back, and you do a lung exam and throat and then the ears it's got a, it's got an attachment and it takes pictures and then it sends you sends you the the exam so wow. this nice. this is you know as this as people realize what a gold mine that is to have that available at a distance uh more and more people will, will so these are these are things that are going to be happening or are happening i know i've got as you can see here a fitbit right right bio biometric sensor i know there's more types actually i've done some work in the past with a company, if anybody's watching out there, called Valencell in Raleigh, North Carolina. And they have been testing these biometric sensors that they've developed over there. And they told me years ago that this is going to be the future. Like that, that, that I haven't quite seen it other than this thing on my arm, but I can totally get how you, as a, as a, a medical professional with an open mind, uh, who can see the benefits of the technology, you want to adopt this as fast as you can, it, it seems to me. And you are not only on the technology side, but also on the the lifestyle side, like the, the, the plant-based vegan stuff. So you got you got everything going as far as I'm concerned, which is awesome. Love to yeah, see. Yeah. So so the Taito, the downside of the Taito Care device now, since they are sort of the leader and the only one out there with this really uh, all-in-one product that's really good, it's about three hundred dollars. And I have a, a $75 discount code that my patients can use. So it ends up being $225. Sometimes they'll do special promotions, get a hundred dollars off. And so uh, but at the same time, if you think about driving to this place or that, and or you know the time savings, and yeah. one of the, the one of the things that I found is really nice is with people that have this, my patients who have this, sometimes the, something will happen in the middle of the night, and they'll they'll do the exam, and then they'll send it to me, and then like 
first thing in the morning, I'll listen and I'll be able to reassure them. Oh, your lungs sound great. You know, oh, your, you know, your heart, you know, it's, you know, no murmurs and things like that. And uh, kids with earaches and stuff like that. I can wow. say, so, oh, so, you know. So you, okay. So what I'm hearing is that you are having uh, a much more complete set of data to work with than you would normally get. And that's kind of been uh, a, a wonder of mine all along. As I've seen technology develop over time, I'm like, why? Like, if it's so hard that, you know, the, the diagnosis is the hardest part of a medical condition. Why don't we get as much data as we can? It sounds like that's what you're doing, which is, which is even better care for the patient, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, it's nice uh, that, that having, we know this technology exists, why don't we use it? You know, yes. it's there. It's like the, the first time I did a telemedicine visit uh, and I realized, wait a second, I don't have to drive there in traffic. I don't have to be late and get yelled at by the front staff and feel guilty. And then I don't have to sit in a sick waiting room. And then, you know, I can talk to my doctor directly in the comfort of my own home and yada, yada. yada. I mean, there's lots of things, lots of benefits. And, and so I'm sold. And so I wanted to make a hundred percent telemedicine practice, yes. but unfortunately the insurance is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We talked about this before. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so that's what I've seen. The Achilles heel in a way of the telemedicine is how do you get insurance to take it? Because of the practices that I've seen up to this point, they're self-pay. They don't take insurance. So what have you done to, to address this? So we're just kicking and screaming and fighting and, and you know, knock down, drag out five of the insurance companies trying to get on board with things. Um, we got a big one, TRICARE East. TRICARE East is half the country. Yes. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, TRICARE East Select, um, anybody who's in the military and ha- or reserves or something has TRICARE East Select, I can, I can be their doctor who lives on the, you know, Eastern states. So that, that's been a big win. Uh, we have in Florida, we have, um, uh, we have Medicare and uh, we have Cigna, uh, but Florida blue, for instance, will not accept us without a brick and mortar. Right. So we are going to, we're setting up in May in Pinellas Park, Florida, just North of St. Petersburg, a one, one day a week visit. And we're hoping to get on board with uh, Florida blue. Okay. And, and then once you get on board with them, since you'll have a, a physical location, will that make it easier to get on board with others? And I'm sure others are looking for ways to get involved with telemedicine because, as I mentioned earlier, I feel like if you're sick and you have a virus or some transmittable thing, the last thing you want to do is go into an office with other people, right? So I would think that they would want this type of, of, uh, of care, I would hope. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the uh, I, I, I kind of think that the patients will demand it. What, I, like I said, your turn. Once you go telemedicine, once you're saying, "Well, boy, I, you know, I'm just going to choose that. That's way easier." And so a lot of the big companies are offering urgent care type uh, telemedicine services. But how we how I we here at Vegan Primary Care uh, distinguish ourselves is like we get to be this. You get to see the same doctor over and over again. The goal yes. is that even if you move someplace in the United yeah. States, I have the license there. there you, <laughs> you know, so uh, the goal with any type of family doctor is that longevity and getting to know the person, so that um, you 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 uh, have that person you can rely on, who's your health advocate, who's also uh, that you know and you trust. You know, so that that's yeah. my goal. Before we move on in this conversation, can someone? A prospective patient go to your website. Do you have a listing of these states on your website? Yes, yes, yes. So right on veganprimarycare.com, people okay. can take a look and, and they can see the states where I'm, I'm active right now. And um, they just click book appointment and you can choose, you know, an hour, 30 minute or in person. Uh, and it's real, real self-explanatory. And then um, I, I prefer seeing patients for an hour if, if we can initially just. I, uh, that's so, awesome. I, that's excellent. I'd like to be able to get to know you. I've never had a doctor that would spend that much time. <laughs> so, so usually it's like a, it's like a, a factory type of environment, you know, I mean, it's uh, just like the factory farming is bad. I think factory medicine, like <laughs> same thing. You, you don't want that. It's, it's just about the bottom dollar and it's really should be about the patient and keeping someone healthy, I think, or curing them, which I think you're about. Now I kind of want to get into that now too, talking about the vegan aspect of things, right? Because I've, the way I see most of the medical establishments set up right now, it's like a, it's like something's broken. Let's let's try to put a band aid on that and and you know try to just manage symptoms, right? But in your case, I I feel like you've got like I said the truth I was speaking about earlier on your side, which is possibility of real healing with patients. And 
So because you're vegan primary care, because you're vegan and plant-based and that's your focus, let me ask you the first question is, do you, what do you, what's your stance? If some patient mentions animal products, what are you going to tell them? Uh, you know, are, are you, are you only selecting patients that are totally vegan? And if someone says they ate a pork chop yesterday, then you got to find another doctor or something. <laughs> like, how does that work? So, um, you know, uh, I, I, I wasn't vegan from birth, you know, and, um, and I understand we're all on a different journey. Um, yes. And, and so, uh, yeah, that's a big question people have like, man, will I be turned away if I'm not vegan or I, I don't even want to talk to him. He's going to judge me. And mm -hmm. I say, do I look like I'm very judgy over here? <laughs> do I, you know, yeah, no. uh, I, yeah, I'm joking around, but, um, the, it's just like, you know, if someone has an unhealthy behavior, I mean, patients smoke, patients drink, you know, alcohol and patients do other unhealthy behaviors. Yes. And so I try. I, I don't, I don't kick somebody out cause they smoke. You know, I try to say, you know, Hey, this is smoking, you know, it's kind of bad for you. What are your reasons for wanting to change? I, I can, I can sort of, I'm, I try to meet people where they're at, right. you, you know, you're trying to guide it's family yeah. medicine. That's our bread and butter of, of healthy lifestyles and how I can get you to have the healthiest, longest lived life where you have most of your years is very productive and healthy and happy. So um, you know, of course, you know, I'm biased. This is vegan primary care. I'm going to, you know, yes. but that's just because we know the evidence. We know the yes. evidence. Once you know the evidence too, it, it's hard not to be on board with all the ethical reasons. Um, if, yes. however you got here, however you got here, whether it was for health, whether it's for environment, whether it was, it was for the ethical aspects of, you know, animals, um, it, it, it's, it's just, it's, it's too hard to ignore. And so you uh, once you realize, oh, I don't need animal protein to uh, then, then it all unfolds and you're, you're on board vegan primary care. You're not, it's not, oh, I got to be plant-based or this or that. I want to be vegan. I want to save the yeah. world and I want us to stop killing animals, you know? Yeah. Like, make everybody, nobody gets hurt, right? Everybody has right. The, their best life. They're the most fun possible. Or right. I think I've, I've heard people say in the past, the goal is to, uh, was it, live I can't try to remember die as late as possible as young as possible or something like that you just want every year to be wonderful you know and and the more the better so that's awesome I mean you're you're doing this and so what I'm hearing you say is that people don't have to be totally vegan that's okay but you know what's best for your patients I think the, I don't think there's any exceptions out there right the best lifestyle is going to be free from animal products the only question is how how, what, what, what are the specifics of that? And I think I know just from dealing with these plants and stuff in the nonprofit, we're still learning more every day. We don't know it all, right? So it's, a, it's an ongoing process for everyone. And you being on the cutting edge, at least a patient or a prospective patient can have the, you know, the, the, the security, at least of knowing that you're on the cutting edge of this and you're going to keep learning too. So they're going to get the benefit of that knowledge. And I don't necessarily know if I can say that about most doctor's offices, unfortunately, you know, so- Good for you. <laughs> well, 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 thanks. You know, I really like, uh, so, you know, the vegan royalty folks, you know, like the Dr. Furman, Dr. Gregor, you know, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. You know, Dr. Ornish and, uh, you know, Dr. McDougall, I can get Dr. Barnard, I could go on and on and on and on. Yes. But one of them that they say, I, I, I forget exactly which one this is, this is uh, attributed to, but they'll say that, you know, the health, the biggest, the biggest aspects and the biggest revolution in health is not going to come from another space age billion dollar medicine, mm -hmm. and um, I mean we've already got we've already got the answers. The answers are, are there right in front of us, and it's the plant based diet, low in oil, salt, and sugar, and um, and so they are coming up with a lot of fancy new uh, monoclonal antibody medications, and we've developed fancy vaccines and stuff like that. And certainly, there's of course there's that place. But for the for health and longevity, the most the biggest the biggest thing is with lifestyle, lifestyle medicine, and eating a plant based diet. And the evidence is is there. It, we, there's it's irrefutable. And so, um, yep. So lifestyle medicine is also a, a more of a, a a term you hear in the industry. That that's kind of what you're using the practice with, right? Lifestyle medicine. Yes, I mean, that's the. I mean, evidence shows that there is multiple uh, factors that can help, you know, like the blue zones, uh, you know, you know, they've got social support, they do oh, yes. the, the activities of daily living, keep them, you know, active throughout the day. They, you know, uh, they have a reverence to, you know, the elderly in the community play a role. Uh, there's a village aspect, you know, mostly plant-based diet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
exercise and you know quality sleep, low amounts of alcohol and, and this kind of thing. So, you know, of all the factors, of course, I focus mostly on diet because I find that's the one that that people have the most trouble with. And it's to me, it's one of the easiest ones to tweak. I mean, you have yeah. absolutely you should have absolute control over what you put in your mouth. Well, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Do you believe that a, a person's chosen diet, what they're putting in their mouth has the, the biggest potential return on their health than anything else specific? Absolutely. Absolutely. But what, yeah. what, what, I mean, yes, the answer is yes. Shout it from the mountaintop. It's yes. I mean, you know, like Dean Ornish, Dean Ornish comes at it with, you know, the lifestyle approach and, you know, he proved that you can reverse coronary artery disease. Right. And then Esselstyn comes along and says, well, Hey, let's just work on the diet. Let's give him the dietary. And, you know, he proved, Hey, you can reverse coronary artery disease with diet. So, yeah. um, uh, I, to me, I, I think that it's the most important thing because it's what you're putting in your body. Yes. We do know that stress and relationships and all these things have an effect uh, uh, and a dramatic effect indeed, for sure. But, uh, you know, the food is your building blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's food is what you have to work with. Um, I sometimes, I sometimes sort of, uh, you know, kind of skew so far as to say that food is for, you know, your building blocks and your health and your body and exercise is for mental health. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, people don't really put those two and two together, but it's hard to be upset. It's hard to be angry. It's hard to be stressed. It's hard to, you know, after you've done some exercise. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and so. And the, know, body he, is, the body is the body is put together to move, designed to move, right? I mean, that's, we're not designed to sit. I guess I hear all the time, sitting is the new smoking. And by the way, I'm standing up. You can't tell in this video. I Me always too. sit. You're staying? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Do some jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so you get it too. I mean, that's it. I mean, I'm so glad to hear you say all this too. I'm, I'm glad we're touching on all these points because it's important that anybody can hear all this. And let me also, in case someone's just stumbling along and listening to this video, watching this video, and they're not convinced about the diet, I just want to say my own thing, and I'll, I'll like to, to hear your input, uh, Dr. Please. Harrington, as well. But just that it's kind of a, a comfort, a, a comforting thing to realize that the food is the most important thing and that, you know, what's going on, you know, what you're talking about. You are, 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 are understanding of, oh, there goes my background. <laughs> yeah. I was doing jumping jacks and messed it up a little bit. <laughs> uh, I have my green screen back there, but, um, and just to know that, let's see if I, ooh, it's coming back. Or right, just to know that it really is about that knowledge and about, your doctor knowing that that's going to heal you if you need to be healed that is that is the greatest chance of, for you to obtain healing so the fact that they can interact with you directly with you and that you know all this stuff and that is that should mean way more uh, than any than any reservation someone might have about not wanting to go and see into a regular doctor's office and you know and do telemedicine I just want to say that that's it. I mean, just that knowledge, that is the, that is the, the real key to healing. So, yeah, well, well, I think I'm glad that you mentioned that um, because, you know, I, I, I don't want to say, um, how do I put it this way? Um, you know, I turned plant-based in 2012 after a failed attempt to lose weight. I'm in the army. I have to run in the army. And every year, you know, my run time would go down a little bit because I gain a pound or two on the standard American diet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I told my patients, hundreds of patients, Hey, you got to lose weight. You know, you got your diabetes is getting worse. Your blood pressure is getting worse. You got to lose weight. I told them to eat a high protein diet, a low carb diet, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what you need is, you know, more chicken and, you know, less bread or something. That's what I would tell them. And so uh, I said, well, diet weight loss must be easy. And all my patients must just have really bad willpower. And so but it wasn't until I had to lose weight myself. Yeah. Uh, I was 20 pounds overweight. I was 175. I needed to be 155. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so I, I, you know, I said, well, I can do this. I'm a doctor. I know you just got to eat less and move more. And, and uh, so I did. Yeah. And that I, used to be the rhetoric. That was it. Right. For a, yeah. a long time. Yeah. I failed. I failed so miserably. I failed so bad. And then I, uh, I kind of lost hope. Because when you're trying to lose weight, it's, it's such a long-term goal that it feels like you're never going to reach the mountaintop. You, you may suffer, suffer, yeah. suffer, and lose one pound. And you say, well, my God, how am I going to do this? And it, it's just because you can't eat a small enough portion of trash to, uh, and lose weight. You, know? it, yeah. I mean, you can lose weight, but you just feel so awful doing it. Yeah. So, 
I, I, I know it sounds like some sort of sob story, but you know, that's, I was ready and willing and I saw the movie Forks Over Knives and then that's when I realized, oh my gosh, I'd heard this message over and over again. I had read um, Healthy at 100. I had read, uh, you know, Start Solution and stuff when I was younger. You know, my mom was into, you know, health and, you know, diets and read. But it wasn't until I had my own experience that I realized, oh my God, I've been telling all my patients the wrong thing to do for years. I switched to a plant-based diet immediately. You know, I basically lost weight without trying, just eating a plant-based diet. Got down to 155, you know, my 18-year-old weight. And all my medical problems got better. You know, my mild blood pressure got better. I had even sort of, you know, mild blood sugar. It, was, it improved dramatically. My testosterone went up, you know, and uh, uh, constipation, acne, you know, heartburn. It was all gone. And yeah. uh, so many so, things, right? I think the, the average person still doesn't believe that so many things are, control. They, they can take control of their own health in that way. I think so many folks still believe it's, pre-programmed genetics and they they are they are entombed in, into that and can't get out of it so i'm i'm glad to hear you say this again we got to say it as much as possible because it, it is true so I, I wanted to i wanted to go back because uh you mentioned that uh and so I, what i was trying to do was to basically set the stage for the fact that i'm the same person as i was before i went plant-based mm-hmm. and here i was telling them you know exactly my patients exactly the wrong thing and so I know where other doctors are coming from. They ha- they only have a short amount of time. Yes, they've, they've got to give them some sort of recommendation, the patient recommendation for diagnostics and treatment. And so diagnostics, we're going to order some labs and we're going to give you some pills because that's what we have. I can't spend any of that time talking about diet because, you know, we science says that diet doesn't help. Mm. But those all those all those studies are basically yeah. uh, standard American diet with less calories. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I think what about the what about the combination of a doctor who has not been taught any different than that, and a patient who's probably unwilling to change any of their habits. Right. If you have a combination like that, that's the only way you can do it, the way you described it. Right. But then when you have a combination of an open-minded patient who really is looking to heal. And someone like you who has all the knowledge, anything's possible. Anything incredible is possible. It's, 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 you know, that's one of the reasons why I, 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 I'm trying to attract folks who are, who are plant-based, uh, who are vegan, because, um, you know, we're birds of a feather, first of all. Uh, yes. We can commiserate about experiences with, you know, uh, the, what they've been through. And, and, and I've been on the other side, too. So it, it's just been, it's, you know. Patients who come to me are generally, you know, either looking for, like you're saying, like we've got a problem, they want to fix it, or they're looking for performance, you know? So I have both, I have both types. I have young patients, I have older patients, um, you know, so it, it's been, it's been a blessing. Okay. Well, I, well, I know th- this sounds incredible to me. Uh, I mean, I can't, I, I haven't done telemedicine, but I believe it's the future. I believe everything that's connected to all the information and all the, the people being connected, which is telemedicine is the future. So I can't wait to see how things develop over time too, with the sensors that you were talking about. Um, you know, that's actually that, that I want to go back to that just for one split second, because that is the missing part of the medical uh, care system. I think in my mind is being able to monitor people more, more rather than less. So I, I'm glad to hear that that's going to happen over time and be more of a thing going forward. But, and you and I also talked about before this interview that, I just want to mention the folks out there. I'm actually fasting now. We're talking about eating food. I'm not eating food. I haven't, this is the first time I've ever done this in my life. 48 hours with no food. I drink water though, but no food. And that in itself has a, a way of resetting people. I think at least that's what I've heard. And uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, doing, I'm, I'm all plant-based as it is, but I just decided, well, I'm going to go a couple of days without having any food. <laughs> well, well, uh, I mean, it's safe, first of all, I mean, and you're not anorexic, first of all, you know, yeah. uh, is that, well, sometimes people think that, <clears throat> that people who go plant based are some, you know, having some sort of uh, disordered eating situation, but that that's not true with a plant based diet, you can have lots of food, high calorie, uh, low calorie density means you can eat a lot, you can eat a lot, you can feel full, you know, <laughs> but but we're talking about fasting here. Fasting has amazing, amazing um, uh, health benefits. Uh, we tend to a lot of times we're being the fed state, you know, the anabolic state, we're building, we're building, we're building, we're storing fat where you know, uh, but in, in, we assume that throughout our evolution, every times, there's feast and famine, and there was this 
natural rhythm where we would have times where we weren't uh, weren't fed in the fed yeah. state. Yeah. And we know that intermittent fasting, where you even decrease the amount of hours that your body is uh, consuming and dealing with the, the foods, we know that you have better health outcomes and weight loss and stuff in, in that situation. And, and in times when we do periodic, people who have like um, inflammatory problems, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, sometimes if they go on a periodic short fast, you can really calm down those inflama uh, inflammatory markers and joint pain. So I've done water fasting myself. I say, hey, I'm not going to tell my patients to do this if I don't do it. And <laughs> right. I, I will say after about three days, you start to hit ketosis and your, 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 your glycogen stores of, your, uh, of the sugars in the, in the muscle start to go down. So people will experience that feeling like when you're working out and you hit that 10th rep where you're like, uh, you start to hit fatigue on the muscles. Anaerobic where you're, where you're doing like a, a quick muscular movement you can only do a couple of those reps and stuff. Uh, and, and so the goal is to not be exercising, doing all that, just normal activity. Right. I wouldn't recommend doing it more than about three days without some sort of monitoring because people's yeah. blood pressure can go so low yes. that people can become dizzy. And those are the problems that people have is like falling over and hurting themselves and yeah. then the re refeeding. So as you're coming out of it, the recommendation is like uh, thin juices and thin soups and, and slowly progressing into uh, more solid foods and, you know, vegetable soups and that kind of thing as you're moving forward. Okay, perfect. Well, and, and this is something that you would, if your patients wanted to do this, you would be overseeing, right, uh, through your practice. Yes, you know, my, my practice is not a fasting practice. Not, it's not like True North Health Center, right, you know, who, right. that's like their, one of their, their, main, their main treatments, which is, oh, I, you know, yeah. that's like my dream come <laughs> true. My, my dream come true is to go there and meet everybody at True North if they're listening, you know, hey, uh, yeah. this is my dream come true. But um, yeah, so I, I mean, I can give people a, advice, but, uh, it, you know, after about three days, it would recommend a medical supervised type of situation. Yes, and, and uh, just for me, I want to clarify, I'm, I'm only going through tomorrow, which will be three days. For me, it's right. just more of, it's like you said, you wouldn't recommend to your patients unless you could do it. To me, I, I've always heard about the health benefits and I'm curious, like I said, I think we're always learning. We're always getting new things. And, and just as I can do something like this is totally new. I also want to say like, like, it's not big, that big deal. If you see, you know, Dr. Harrington online with telemedicine, if you're only used to going to the office, it, it can be better too. And I think it is. So I think that all of this is a similar line of thought, line of thinking. And I'm just very, very glad that you're one of the pioneers here in, in this, this whole next level, you know, type of medicine. <laughs> so awesome. I was, I was very excited that you're, that I got to talk to you. And now if folks want to become a patient, I think you mentioned the website earlier, what's the website again and what's the process uh, just quickly describe. I know you mentioned it earlier, but you can describe it again. Yep. Uh, veganprimarycare.com is our website. And you'll see in the upper corner book appointment. If uh, you, on the site, you can learn all about us. So, you know, uh, my wife and I, we run the practice. Uh, and, and so uh, you can see, you know, all the uh, frequently asked questions and you can see the states where I'm located, see if it would work out for us and, and just hit book appointment. And then when you book appointment, is a, a link to show which type of appointment you want, a long appointment, a short appointment or an in-person and you just click it. And, uh, and uh, then we set you up. We set you up with a, an electronic medical record, and uh, you can add things and you know place any kind of old labs and stuff that you want us to review, or any kind of you know paperwork. As a primary care doctor, I do paperwork for people if they need for um, you know work notes and FMLA, where you know uh, accommodations and stuff at work. And so I'm there for you. I can be your advocate. Okay. All right. Awesome. So thank you again for being with us. I hope that, that we can talk again in the near future because I would love to hear about how this, this uh, practice is going to be progressing and expanding because I'm sure that it is, you know, uh, and, and again, it's glad to talk to you. And, and if anybody out there is considering, you know, doing telemedicine with Dr. Harrington, please don't even consider it anymore. Just, I would just log on, try it out, test it out. I think that that you'll be amazed and you'll wish you had done this a long time ago. That's my thought. <laughs> so thanks for the support, Mike. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye-bye.